We are only a few days away from the blessed month, from the best season in the year. Only days away before the crescent of Ramadan will shine and this blessed month will begin. A month which the believers eagerly wait for and long to reach. It's a, it's a blessed month that moves the hearts and the bodies and brings them close to Allah Azza wa Jal. Why wouldn't one's heart long for such a month when it is the month during which rewards are multiplied, ranks in Jannah are raised, sins are forgiving? It is a month during which different types of acts of worship are performed. Taraweeh, the night prayer, recitation of Quran, generosity in giving out charity, repentance, supplication to Allah Azza wa Jal. A month during which Allah Azza wa Jal showers the believers with His mercy and His favors. And it is enough honor that it is the month during which Allah Azza wa Jal sent down His words. Al Quran Al Kareem. Shahru Ramadan al Ladi Unzila fihi al Quran Hudan lil Nas. The month of Ramadan is that during which the Quran was revealed as guidance for the people. The Prophet وسلم, used to motivate the companions and encourage them so that they would prepare and be ready and eager to utilize that month in the best manner. In the book of Imam Ahmad, and it is classified as authentic by Al Arnaut. The Prophet ﷺ would say, The month of Ramadan has approached you. It is a blessed month which Allah Azza wa Jal made compulsory upon you to fast. It is a month during which the gates of Jannah are opened and the gates of hell are closed and the devils are chained. In it is a night, the virtue of which is better than 1,000 months. Whoever is deprived of its virtue, meaning that night, is indeed the deprived one. Indeed, he is a loser who lets this month pass and particularly the last 10 nights and especially the night of Al-Qadr without being amongst those who are forgiven. If Allah Azza wa Jal blesses us and prolongs our lives to reach the month of Ramadan, then we have to be really grateful and we have to express practical gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal for having prolonged our lives to reach this month and thus being able to gain 
and acquire from these abundant rewards. And if one is sincere with Allah Azza wa Jal and truthful and intense sincerely and faithfully to Allah to properly make use of the month, but then the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal prevents him, whether that be in death or falling ill or any other reason that prevents him or would prevent him from fasting the month, then he will not be deprived from the reward. In the book of Imam Ahmad and classified as, as authentic by Al-Albani, the Prophet ﷺ said to one of the companions, "In If you are truthful to Allah, if you are sincere with Allah, then Allah Azza wa Jal will fulfill your wish. You will be rewarded for what you've intended. Brothers, the companions used to wait for Ramadan as the Salaf used to describe them, used to wait for Ramadan and supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal for six months so that he would prolong their lives to reach Ramadan and after the end of Ramadan they would supplicate the remaining months so that Allah Azza wa Jal would accept their deeds in Ramadan. And with this we start the preparation for Ramadan. The reception of Ramadan starts with this very act, supplicating Allah Azza wa Jal. See, our keenness, our sincerity is manifested by our persistent supplication to Allah Azza wa Jal to prolong our lives to reach Ramadan. If we're sincere, then the easiest thing to do is ask Allah Azza wa Jal, call upon Him. Oh Allah, prolong my life. Make me live long enough to reach Ramadan, healthy, strong, and enable me to utilize it and worship you in the way that pleases you for your sake, out of faith and in hope for the reward. من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. This is in Bukhari. Whoever fasts Ramadan sincerely for the sake of Allah and with the hope of the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal, all his previous sins will be forgiven. Ibn Umar used to call the month of Ramadan, the month of virtue throughout. He used to say, welcome the month which is virtuous throughout. We fast during its day and we pray to Hajjah during its night. They took Ramadan seriously. They took Islam seriously. And in particular, during seasons, of virtue. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to follow into their footsteps and to enable us to prepare for the reception of Ramadan. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu ma tasma'una wa astaghfirullaha fa astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Being blessed to long to live longer and act righteously is 
described or was described by the Prophet ﷺ as the best thing that could happen to a person. He ﷺ said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ طَالَ عُمُرُهُ وَحَسُنَ عَمَلُهُ And this is in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, the best amongst you is he who lives longer while acting righteously. So living until we reach Ramadan is a blessing by itself. And Imam Ahmad reported, and it was classified as authentic by Al-Albani, narrated by Abu Hurairah. He said, two people, two men, from the neighborhood of Bali, in the tribe, in, in, in one of the tribes of Medina, became Muslim. One of them performed jihad and was martyred. And the second one lived a year longer than that and then died. Was not martyred, but died normally. Talha ibn Ubaidillah saw a dream. Saw that these two people are in Jannah. And that the one who died later was admitted into Jannah before the one who was martyred. So he became confused. He thought this was strange. So he went to the Prophet ﷺ the following morning and informed him with what he saw. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did he not fast one extra Ramadan and pray around 6,000 raka'at, a year's worth of prayers, during that year that he lived longer? In other words, he was telling him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that since he lived longer, a year longer, and was enabled by Allah Azza wa Jal to perform these acts of worship, he took a higher rank than that which was martyred, although being martyred in Islam holds a very, very high rank. So we need to be keen on asking Allah Azza wa Jal to prolong our lives and enable us to worship Him during Ramadan. Another thing in preparation is that we need to be firm and determined and sincere to Allah Azza wa Jal to, to take advantage of this month. We need to remember that Allah Azza wa Jal described Ramadan as ayyaman ma'dudat, a limited number of days. So as soon as it comes, it goes. Don't we all experience this every single year? SubhanAllah, Ramadan is ending. It just started. Don't we all say that? We always hear this and we always say this. The first day and then before you know it, it's the 15th day. Before you know it, it's Eid night. Ramadan is gone. So we need to remember that. Because remembering this will help us now prepare in advance. We still have a few days to put a practical schedule for Ramadan. Don't make Ramadan just like any month of the year. And let us not be amongst those who make Ramadan a feast of food and banquets. Don't exhaust your wives. Don't exhaust your household with food demands, invitations. Ramadan was not meant for that. It is not meant to go and spend this a number of thousands of dollars or pounds or rials or whatever on food so that we eat. One of the slave females in the early generations was sold by her master to a family. So, with the advent of Ramadan, she noticed that they're piling up food and storing and storing. And she said, what are you guys doing? Why are you piling up all this 
huge amounts of food. They said, we're preparing for, Ram for Ramadan. She said, is Ramadan a month of food and eating for you? Sell me back to my old master. This is not a good household. Let's make a practical schedule. Set a schedule for you. Don't make Ramadan the recitation of Quran in Ramadan like before and after Ramadan. Don't make your night prayers in Ramadan like otherwise. Don't make your spending in Ramadan equal to that which you spent before and after. Make Ramadan distinct. Make it stand out. Make it something special. Work hard to make Ramadan something special. Work hard to achieve the goal for which Allah ordained us to fast. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon. Siyam was made compulsory upon you like it was made upon those before you. Perhaps that you attain piety. We need to cleanse our hearts in Ramadan. And this doesn't happen by acting, acting randomly, not being ready. When someone is going on a journey, on a vacation trip, they do their homework, they prepare. They see if, if a visa is needed, they obtain it. They reserve their hotels, the car rental, everything. A month in advance. Well, since we have few days, we're not going to make this equal to the vacation. But at least these four days left or five days left, let's utilize these in setting a good, solid plan to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and to work towards achieving piety, taqwa. Another thing we need to do is learn how to fast. Many people don't know what the pillars of Siyam are, what the obligations are, what the student recommended acts are, what nullifies their acts. It's not time to enumerate stories on this, but I've heard stories, real life stories, on things that no Muslim would think someone is not aware of. I'll just give an example. Would you believe that someone doesn't know that having intercourse during the day with your spouse nullifies, invalidates your fast where people, some people don't? Well, we need to know, we need to learn. There is no excuse for those who are ignorant about the matters of fara'id, the obligations which must be fulfilled to Allah. There is no excuse for not knowing them or not knowing what nullifies them. Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ ذِكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ If you don't know, then ask those of knowledge. And alhamdulillah, in this time and era, getting a fatwa, getting an answer, is very facilitated. Kindness and uh, Relationship with kin folks. Let's settle all affairs, all differences, especially with kin folks, especially with the closest kinship parents, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, children. Let's be on good terms entering Ramadan with clean hearts good feelings towards one another. Allah says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَصْلِحُوا ذَاتَ بَيْنِكُمْ Fear Allah and reconcile all matters of differences amongst you. This is general. And it's worthier in the, in the month of Ramadan. Be sure that the one who enters Ramadan severing ties with king folks, is subjected himself to be rejected by Allah Azza 
Finally, when you want to start something good, start something new, you start it fresh. You reset your meter. This resetting I'm referring to is repentance to Allah. Let's reset our sin meter. Let's repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah calls upon us. Ya ayyuhal ladheena aamanu tuubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. O you who have believed, turn to Allah in repentance with sincere repentance. Let's start Ramadan fresh with our records repented from record of sins. The conditions of sincere and accepted repentance is that one gives up the sin for the sake of Allah, sincerity for the sake of Allah. Being determined never to return to that sin. Regretting having committed that sin. And if the sin is something that is related to people's rights, then return the rights to people if you can. If you can't, then ask their forgiveness for wronging them. And Shaykh al Uthaymin rahmatullahi alayhi added a very important condition. He said repentance must be done in a time when repentance is accepted, meaning before you're on your deathbed and you're dying or before the sun rises from the west. If we work on these brothers, sisters, we will have a good, fresh, solid start in Ramadan. And let us be aware of the type of sincerity that is restricted to Ramadan, meaning some people say, okay, I will stop smoking in Ramadan. Okay, what about after that? Let's live, live, live until we reach Eid and we'll talk about it. That's not a sincere repentance. That's not an accepted repentance. Because you're not sincerely repenting because one of the conditions is that you firmly give it up, be determined not to go back. These are not fulfilled. So let's not make our repentance to Allah Azza wa Jal limited to the boundaries of Ramadan. And let us not be of those who will make Ramadan go without being forgiven. Let us not be deprived from the mercy of, of Allah Azza wa Jal during Ramadan. Let's not be amongst those who feel Ramadan as a burden, something very heavy on the heart. Their main concern in the beginning of the day is what they're going to eat at the end of the day. And whenever they get the chance to sleep, they spend it sleeping or in idle talk or sometimes even in sin. Let's be serious about our ibadah. Let's be serious about Ramadan. Let's be true to ourselves. Let's work hard on rescuing ourselves from the fire of hell. Allahumma balighna Ramadan wa inna fihi ala ta'a wa j'alha khalisatan sawaba wa j'alha imanan wa ihtisaba wa taqabbalha minna ya kareem.